Here's a scary story. I found a butcher online that sells beef tenderloins that are trimmed, tied, all ready to go for $77 a pound. That's pretty terrifying, but we've got an answer here to that. I'm going to save you some serious money. Natalie's here. She's going to show us how to prepare beef tenderloin. So let's talk <laughs> meat. A tenderloin looks very impressive on a table, can feed a crowd. It's really easy to carve sure. and it's extremely tender but it's absolutely expensive. Crazy expensive. You can buy an untrimmed tenderloin and break it down yourself and you'd be able to save a lot of money and be able to make a great sauce out of it as well. So you're gonna wanna find a six to seven pound untrimmed tenderloin for this recipe. But if you are purchasing a pre-trimmed one, you're gonna wanna use a five pound roast. And we're gonna start off by patting it dry. And what's amazing is this whole thing probably costs right around $100, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, but save you some serious money. So you can start peeling off some of this fat somewhat easily with just your hand. Before we start any of the trimming, this long muscle that runs through the side is called the chain. We're just gonna take this off so we can make a sauce with it later. So Natalie's using a boning knife to start here because a boning knife is very flexible, very thin. She's gonna be able to get in there without taking away too much meat. So this top portion is called the head, and then this part is called the tail, and usually the middle portion is referred to as the Chateaubriand. We do wanna leave some fat on here, but these larger pockets are inedible, so we're just gonna take them off. So you're just getting rid of all the visceral fat that's yes, on the outside. Yes, all the visceral fat that kinda of won't really break down, but we also still want some fat to- Base the yeah, meat, right? Yeah, essentially base the meat. And so for this part right here, there is some silver skin that you can pull off with your hands. So Natalie just took off the silver skin. That's basically the fascia that's on the outside of the meat. And that never really tenderizes at all. No, it does not. So I'm kind of just angling this bony knife upward and doing a soft sawing motion and pulling this other piece of silver skin to take it off. So we know that tenderloin is a very hard cut to cook properly sure. because of its weird odd shape. It's thicker at the head and then it's thinner at the tail. We realized that the easiest way to get around this problem was just to make two roast. See where the base of the head is over here? We're gonna cut about an inch below it. Okay. So this is one roast. And then this other one, we're gonna tuck underneath and then tie it. Nice. Just about the same size. We're gonna tie our roast at one inch intervals. It's a little bit easier to start at the middle. And then we're also going to do a double loop on the knot so it stays. We're only gonna tie it three times over here on the tail end so it retains its shape and it cooks more evenly. Great, that's gonna keep that bottom part tucked under. Correct. We're gonna do the same thing with this roast as well. Little we'll snip. Right, so roasts are good to go. This is two pieces of plastic wrap, and we're gonna start with one of these roasts, and we're gonna do one tablespoon of salt, and this is kosher salt. So we're salting on all sides, not just the top. We really want this salt to penetrate. Unseasoned beef is A travesty. Terrible. Yeah, it really is. That's a great word for it. I feel like it's rude. It's such a disservice. That's exactly it. It's rude. So this is good to go. And again, this is two pieces of plastic wrap. Just to ward off any leakage. Yes. Okay. And we're gonna do the same with the other roast as well. I'm gonna refrigerate these for 12 hours, up to 24 hours, but anything past the 24 hour mark is gonna cause the exterior of the meat to get too dry. Okay. All right, so our roasts have been salted and they've been in the refrigerator for 12 hours. And I just took the plastic wrap off and we're gonna add pepper now because if we would have added it before, it would have just come off with the plastic wrap. So we're gonna cook these in a 250 degree oven and the tail end is gonna take about an hour to 20 minutes to an hour and 40 minutes. And then the bigger roast will take an hour and 40 minutes to two hours. So low and slow for the roast. Keep the juices inside. Exactly. All right. Thank you. So meanwhile, that's going. We're gonna start in a sauce with the chain that we reserved. We're just gonna cut this into one inch pieces. We're not gonna take off a lot of the fat or the gristle on here because we're gonna end up discarding the solids. Gotcha. Now, if you didn't have the chain, if you were starting with a pre-peeled tenderloin, you could just buy a little bit of beef stew meat? Yes, 12 ounces of stew meat. Great. So this is one tablespoon of unsalted butter. And to this, we're just gonna add our chain. 
So we want to spread this around so they're not on top of each other. We're going to let this meat go for about 10 to 12 minutes on medium high heat or until a really nice fawn forms. So it's been 10 minutes and we have a great fond already formed. So we're gonna add two tablespoons of tomato paste. We wanted to keep these classic red wine sauce flavors. And we also wanted a lot of umami as well. We're just gonna cook it for a little bit to get that tinny flavor out. This is two cups of red wine. We wanna be using a medium body wine, like a Cote de Rhone or a Pinot Noir. This is two cups of beef broth. And then at this point is where I want to start scraping down those brown bits that were on the side. To this, we're going to add one shallot that's been thinly sliced, two tablespoons of soy sauce, again, for another umami component. Nice savory flavor. Yes. And one and a half tablespoons of sugar, just to balance out all that super savory flavor that we have. And then six thyme sprigs. And again, we're just gonna see if we have any more browned bits. Let this come up to a boil. We're gonna cook this until it reduces to about four cups, so 12 to 15 minutes. Okay, and this is not the time to pull out the dried thyme. You wanna add that fresh thyme because Natalie added both the stems and the leaves. There's a lot of flavor compounds in there. You paid money for that beef tenderloin. Might as well make the sauce as good as it can be, right? So this has been cooking for about 15 minutes and let's just see if it's about four cups worth and then we'll drain out the solids. Okay. So we're just gonna strain the solids. It's better to go fast with this. <laughs> we want every last bit of flavor in here. So we're gonna pour this back into our saucepan. Turn this back up to medium high and then we're gonna add a slurry to it. We're gonna add two and a half teaspoons of cornstarch to one tablespoon of cold water. So we wanted a thick sauce, but not too thick, like how it is with the roux, where it mm -hmm. just kind of becomes stodgy. We just wanted something that was rich with a little bit of a, of a mouthfeel, nothing gotcha. really too super decadent. So we're gonna add our cornstarch slurry to a boiling liquid because we want the starch granules to activate and to actually swell up and to thicken our sauce. Otherwise we'd end up with cornstarch dumplings. Exactly. We just want to be whisking in the slurry to completely dissolve it in the sauce. We want to boil it for about 30 seconds until it's slightly thickened. So on low heat, we're going to add four tablespoons of butter, one tablespoon at a time, because we don't want the butter to break. We don't want the milk solids to separate. It looks beautiful. It looks very velvety. It smells awesome, too. Mm -hmm. All right. So I just want to taste this just to double check to see how the salt is. We're just gonna add a little bit of salt to this. So I'm just gonna put a lid on this and keep it warm. I'm gonna remove it from the heat and we're just gonna wait for our roast to be ready. Okay. Thank you. Huh. Okay, so oh, they, I've got questions. Okay, so they <laughs> don't look pretty right now. I know they don't look pretty, but they're not browned yet. I just wanted to tempt the tail end of the roast since it tends to cook a little bit quicker. All right, so it's 125. So we're just gonna put this in our cutting board. We're gonna let it rest, and then we'll put the other roast in. If you could tempt that for me, that'd be awesome. You got it, a little bit of foil. And the door is off. So this head end roast, we're gonna let it go for another 20 minutes or until it reaches 125. It's a little bit thicker. Yes. So our roasts have been resting for 20 minutes. Let's take a look at those beauties. Yep. Beautiful. <laughs> I know, I know. So this is two tablespoons of vegetable oil and we're gonna heat it on medium high until it's almost smoking. Gotcha. And right before we do that, we're just gonna pat dry our roast. A dry surface makes for a better crust. Correct. Just about smoking, we're gonna put in our roast. So we wanna brown these five to seven minutes constantly turning them. There it is. So just within a couple minutes, we got an awesome crust like that. All right, about five minutes more? Yep. All right, so our roasts are browned and we're just gonna take off the twine. They're browned, that's just half the story. They're gorgeous. They're beautiful. They're mahogany, crusted. It really does make a difference to start roasts and, and meat in a lower oven like 250 because it also dries the exterior a little bit. Then when you brown it, it looks like that. 
I'm just gonna cut these into half inch slices. Look how juicy that is. Yeah, very well seasoned throughout too. I've cut into beef tenderloins that were more reminiscent of the Kansas Dust Bowl. They're so dry. <laughs> how many slices would you like? Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, two, two, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so two slices for you. This is what we call an appetizer. All right, and we have the sauce here. Yeah. Nice and warm still. It's very delicious. You're gonna wanna drink this sauce, trust <laughs> me. That's it, that's all it took to get through that. The texture of the meat is buttery. It is so tender and juicy. And I love the crust, that dark color on the outside. And even as it's getting towards the exterior of the roast, it still is medium rare. Mm -hmm. You cooked it perfectly. And I'm in love with the sauce. Mm, this is perfection. Now like great technique, great tips, beef tenderloin for dinner I think every weekend. I'm glad you like it. Well, a classic roast beef tenderloin dinner is actually easier than you think. Trim a six pound tenderloin yourself and reserve the chain trimmings. Cut the roast into two, season with salt, and then refrigerate overnight. Roast in a low temperature oven until the meat registers 125 degrees. Meanwhile, make a sauce by browning the reserved trimmings. Stir in tomato paste, then red wine, beef broth, and fresh thyme. Simmer, strain, then thicken with cornstarch and butter. Rest the roast, then sear afterwards. Slice the beef and serve with that beautiful sauce. So from Cook's Country, a foolproof plan for a fabulous classic roast beef tenderloin. We're gonna be here all day eating that, you know that. That's fine. <laughs> Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>